In the months after September 11th, the way we quickly got this no-fly list and secondary screening list up and running is we, the government, would hand the airlines the list of bad guys, and they would check on their computers to make sure that no passengers were on that list. Now, that has some obvious insecurities, right? We are giving our highly sensitive list of bad guys to every airline, and we had to give it to foreign airlines as well. So what SecureFly tried to do first off is to have that check happen in government computers. So instead of the government giving lists to the airlines, the airlines would give lists to the passengers to the government who would do the comparison and flag people. So that is the primary thing Secure Flight was going to fix. I mean, there are a lot of other things too. Right? They needed to fix the problem of false positives. Right? Pretty much everybody flagged by the no-fly list isn't the person the government is looking for. And that's because the checks are very, very sloppy. Secure Flight was supposed to clean that up by having more information. Right? A date of birth, for example, will make a huge difference in dealing with these false positives. There were also plans to do other things, to do uh, checks using auxiliary information for airline passengers. Those have really fallen by the wayside. But the real crux of secure flight is to bring that check into the TSA instead of at the airlines.